Tom Hopkins is an absolute legend in the sales space. He's personally trained over 5 million salespeople. And here are his five steps to thriving in sales. Well, first of all, I try to teach people that come to my training that in a way, if you're in sales, you're in the word business. And every word that you say that enters the person's ear creates emotions and feeling. And there's a basic truth that people don't buy anything logically. They buy it emotionally. Then they defend it logically. So it's so important that you don't say words that create an enemy called fear. And, and so the, the vocabulary is so important. Uh, there's positive vocabulary, which I call glamour words. Now, a glamour word is commonly known but uncommonly used words that make you sound different than your competition. And that's one thing about words. You want to speak differently than the last or the next salesperson that they talk to. So the glamour words would be words like dynamic, exciting. It's so wonderful to see how, how our company is expanding because of the wonderful things we're doing for salespeople. So, so those are positive words. A word like unique, the service our company gives in selling is very unique and makes us different. And I think that's one of the reasons why we are growing so beautifully, because we've tried to be special with the way we handle our clients. So those are the positives. Now, on the other side of the coin, you have negative words. And let me preface this, Will, by saying many people in our country don't like the thought of being sold they want to own. We have the greatest consumer nation in the world, but yet there's a feeling, I don't want you to sell me. If I want it, I'll take it. So in speaking words, there are 10 words that you should never say to a consumer, a client, a future buyer. And the reason is these, these words could almost be categorized, Will, as what I call rejection sales jargon. And what that means, they're words that are used in selling. And when people hear them, up comes the fear that you're trying to sell me. And we can give the folks these 10 words. Hopefully, they'll eliminate them from their vocabulary. How's that sound? Well, the first word you don't want to use is the word price. Because when you tell a person the price of the vehicle, the price of the insurance, the price of the home subconsciously their mind goes, maybe I should shop around and see if I can get a low work price. So we never say price. We tell them the total investment. And so by the total investment, which is positive, we aren't creating the fear of having them shop for a lower price. So that's number one. Number two is down payment. When you are selling a product where they give you a deposit or a down payment, when you use the words down payment, immediately their minds go, I now have to write a check. I don't know if I want to do that. I'm not ready right now. So we always say the initial investment rather than the down payment. And then, of course, there's a, a word that many people use and they don't realize you're scaring the people to death. And that's the word contract. Now, there are people right now still that have some type of paperwork they fill out, although our selling world has changed to where a lot of it's done electronically on the computer and so forth. But if you do have a paper that you fill out, don't call it a contract because immediately they go, oh, if we get my signature on that, then I'm bound and I don't know if I want to do that. So we always call it either the paperwork or the agreement. See, people love to agree. So let's just go over the agreement or let's just jot, jot our thoughts down on the paperwork. Or you can even just call it a form. Agreement, paperwork, or form, they don't put up their defenses as much as when they hear, here's the contract. Most people in sales have not really been trained and the company maybe never let them be aware of the 10 fear-producing rejection words. And so that's why the company hires them and says, here's our contract. And so right away, they look at the contract and they say, that's what I'll call it. I just found that when I asked them to approve the paperwork, to draft up our feelings on the agreement and see if it could, makes even, even sense to go ahead, I found that I could move closer to the final closing of the sale 
because I didn't create the fear of letting them know I'm going to put some words down on this printed form and ask you to sign it, which is another word we don't ask them to do. We don't say the word sign. Mom and dad taught us, hey, be careful. Don't you buy anything unless you really talk to me about it. So don't sign anything, especially a contract. So we don't ask them to sign. We ask them to uh, endorse it, authorize it, to approve it. If you'll just approve my paperwork, we'll set up the delivery date for next week and look forward to serving you and your family for many, many years. See, many of the husbands and wives, for you that do business with them, they talk before they meet you, and they say, we're not going to buy anything. Now, we'll get all the facts and figures, but we're not going to buy. And so that's another reason why, and that's another one of the 10 words. We don't say the word buy. We never say when you buy our product, when you buy the vehicle, when you buy the home. We always use the word own. People love to own. They're just nervous about buying. So we replace buy with the word own. And, and it's amazing. See, the reason I think I was the top real estate agent in all of California for five years is because I closed so many sales because I didn't use these 10 words. And again, again, when I do seminars, the people go, wow, we're going back to our company and we're going to have everyone commit to not saying these 10 rejection fear producing words when they're going to try to make a sale. And I guess the proof's in the pudding. You know, there's a lot of people that do seminars that didn't have a lot of sales, but I had 1,553 homes and every one of them, most of them I had to start from the beginning of them not ready to go ahead to ending up getting the check two and a half, three hours later. So I, I think that's one reason why so many people have said, hey, I'm going to take Tom's training. And of course, you and I have this brief little time together, but the 10 words uh, are really important to eliminate. Uh, the word sell or the word sold. Those are fear producers. You know, John, we sold your friend. Well, all the buyer heard was you sold or manipulated, you used high pressure, and we're not going to get sold. Or when you say to someone, when I sell you, right away they go, well, you're not selling us. My wife and I said we're not going to buy today. So we never say sell or sold. We say get them involved or help them acquire. We've had so many people get involved in this vehicle that love the performance, the economy, the gas mileage. And I think you're going to feel the same way. And that's why I'd love to help you acquire it and see how happy we can make you. What you're really doing with the right words is mentally having them have the feelings of ownership, the enjoyment, the benefits, the features of whatever your product or service is. And these words are really doing that. It's kind of like when we've gotten so many families involved in this neighborhood. Well, see, that's kind of letting them know we didn't sell them. We got them involved in owning these beautiful properties. Or we've had so many happy people that we've helped acquire this vehicle. And that's one reason why our dealership is marketing more cars than almost anyone in the city. See, that type of feeling is throwing them into future benefit, future ownership. And, and that's one of the reasons why I keep saying, try to eliminate these words. And uh, another word you don't want to let them hear you say is the word objections. Because uh, here again, subconsciously, when I say to you, I've heard that objection before, right away the human mind has envelopes and it opens up what we call the objection envelope. And they may come up with an objection they hadn't thought about, but you said objection, so now the envelope opens. So we always say areas of concern. We've helped so many folks overcome that area of concern. And most of my happiest clients are thrilled that we did. And there's, again, another word. Uh, another word people should never use is the word deal. And many people say this is a good deal. And there are people who were told something in the past was a good deal, and they did own it, and they were upset that they did. They never liked it. So we no, never call it a deal. It's an opportunity or a transaction. Gosh, we've helped a lot of people with this opportunity to own this wonderful whatever. And so instead of uh, the deal, we say opportunity or transaction. And also don't use the word problem. Because if I say to someone, you know, I've, I've talked to folks about that problem, right away the envelope in the mind of problems opens up. And they come up with a problem we hadn't thought of. So drop problem. 
and use the word challenge. We've helped so many people overcome that challenge. And of course, because they own this wonderful and they're happy we got them involved and they feel that the investment, it was good. And this is how we built the reputation in our company for selling more homes or whatever it is than any other company in the area.